Let's try it again. Good morning, y'all. It's me, Rodney. Hey, guys. It's me, Missy, with Rustic Relics. Yay. We good, did it. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Karen. Yay. Jay, good morning. Hey, How Irma. You How are you doing today? Irma's from Southern California. Okay. All right. So, what are we doing today? Today, we're kind of taking it easy. Um, and we're just going to work on some smalls, decoupage and smalls and stuff like that instead of doing any kind of furniture. A couple of reasons why, because number one, I didn't get a piece of furniture prepped. And number two, it's Friday and it's good Friday. So we're just going to, we're going to take it easy today. We're just going to just do some small stuff, but I think it'll be fun because I do have a couple of things to show y'all. I'm going to go ahead and show y'all the decoupage of the month papers for April in case you didn't see the video. And then um, I'm going to show you some of the projects that we're going to be working on. I kind of already done some projects with the decoupage of the month papers. Um, so they're in that video. If you um, haven't seen it, I just made some little block sitters. I think they're cute and I did them in a, a little bit different way. I don't have anything today to use those papers with, um, but that's okay. That's well, technically okay. you could use them. I mean, technically I could use them, but I'm just going to. But you... I kind of got some new napkins too. So Good morning, I'm cat wanting to play with those too so hold on good morning kathy good morning margie hi lorna how are you doing today hi hi guys hey karen tina uh, tina montville's joined us hi tina all right so you want to go to this camera yeah let's go to the overhead go and the overhead. get to the cool decoupage of the month stuff so this um, month we are all mushroomed out. That's what we kind of got going with doing um, a little bit of a vintage vibe and a little bit of the whimsical vibe. So you can go either way with these, um, make different stuff. Um, so Missy this is loves the first, mushrooms. Yeah, I love the, especially the vintage ones. Um, so this is right up my cat style. said mushrooms. I need a mushroom block for my house. She does. I'll make you one. Cat is that cat? Yeah. Cat said that. Yeah, I'll make cat one. Yeah. So I have this sheet, and then I have this one. It's just got a couple of different vintage ones. The reason why they're not all on there straight is so I can fit more than one, more than one or yeah. two on the page. Because Missy says she wanted more, I gave her more. That's right. All right. So, and then here you got some whimsical ones with all the vibrant colors and stuff like that. So these are really fun. And this one's got a little fairy on it. It's cute. The little fairy was by far the hardest. To do and then again here these two um this one's kind of just a little bit um just a neutral mushroom there but these two are really pretty i love vibrant designs missy yeah. likes the classic designs i so, like the vibrant yeah designs. this is rodney's style and this is my style <laughs> that's fun um and then these two are larger so one goes this way and then of course one goes this way this one's got a little butterfly on it karen said these are so cute these are really pretty. And then we're back to the first paper. So I'll show you the block sitters that I made with um, my vintage ones. So I made... Just in case you didn't watch the video yeah, last night. Yeah, you didn't night. watch the video. Um, I made this one. This is a bunch of different layers. This is that music paper. And then it has the napkin that, we, um, that I did on the last live and how I made it into faux rice paper. Um, with all the texture on it and then i layered a mushroom on top of that so that's three different layers there and then here um for these two what i took i had these little scrap blocks um, and i used my iod stamp and um, i painted it drop cloth and then i stamped it and then i decoupaged my mushrooms on top of that so they just have that um just a vintage old vibe and then I, of course, went around the edges with my brown paint. So that's how I did these. Um, these are the three that I made right off the bat with these mushrooms. So this one is this one. Um, of course, this one is on that paper. And then this little one is somewhere on one of these other papers. Somewhere. What you looking for? Which mushroom is that? That's on the front Oh, paper. it's that one? Yeah. yeah, it's that one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you just, a a little, uh, you just knocked a little off the bottom on that Yeah, one. that's all it was. Cat yeah. says she loves the small ones. Yeah, I'll have to make you some, Cat. Make you some. I like the way she trimmed around the edges on those small ones with the uh, brown paint to kind of... Yeah, just box it, it in, finish it up. Transition really good. Yeah. 
Judy they says do. she's liking the vintage ones too. Yeah, I really like them. I think they're fun. I do, I do. I so, like yeah. the, the, I like, I just like, there's something about fantasy vibrant stuff. I, I like it a lot. Yeah. That's the thing I like to draw the most is fantasy. I also read fantasy novels, so that would make sense. That's, yeah. So I like, I think on this one, like, I, what I would like to do is take that brown paint and then just go around the edges of this one too and just kind of box it in. I think that would be cute too. How are you doing today, Barb? But Barb like sneaking it. into her seat just a little late. All right. I like how that one has so much, so many details, so much texture. Okay, so that was the decoupage of the month. Those papers are for April. Um, if you are new here and you haven't signed up, um, there's a link. Links in the description. Links in the description so you can do that. So what we're going to work with today is, like I said, we're just kind of doing smalls. We're going to go easy. It's Friday, and I kind of got a lot of things I need to do. So first off is this riser. Missy throws these risers together like it's nothing. It's just a board, and then it has a little spindle legs. Um, I need to paint the back side of it, so I'm not going to show you that. But I got the top part painted. So um, this is just drop cloth um, that's painted on top of it. And I have a couple of different options. And I think you're going to like these napkins that I got too. Um, is which once we get, once I get through all of them, um, I think we're going to come up with a bundle deal, right? For the napkins yeah that's what we're gonna try to do that's what we're gonna try to do um but i just want to go ahead and like kind of sneak peek and show y'all some of them i found this one and i have um a display at the front of the store and what i'm fixing to do is empty it all out and then go all blue and white so i've been really focusing on blue and white stuff and when i found this i was like this is perfect and i love a riser on anything so um, I grabbed the riser and then I'm going to, I think what I want to do is iron on this so you can see that the napkin is not quite as big as the riser, but we're going to be able to make it work because these actually tile up really good. Uh, hey Donna, how are you doing today? Donna is with us. Barb said, I love toad, toad stools. They are entwined with fantasy and fairy tales from my childhood. There you yes. go. That's right. So you're they not are. the only one. I know that. Yeah. You remember that gnome show? When gnome we were growing up, show. there was a cartoon and it was gnomes in a forest. Mm. But they were like serious gnomes. It wasn't like, watched, a, wasn't like a kitty cartoon. There's a was, good opportunity. There's a good chance that we watched two different TV shows growing up. Yeah, you're right. Because yeah. you're, you were a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So these match up really good. They just take um, a little bit of concentration to... Um, line them up and match them up really good but I think that this is what I want to put on this because I really like this look um, and I think I just want to iron on this paper onto this riser I believe that's what I want to do so I think that's what I want to do here and then the other thing that I wanted to work on is um, I have these seashells and they're I real. See them. I thought they were fake. Yeah, They're real seashells. I see them all the time where people decoupage on the inside of them and they use them as like little trinket trays. So I do have a leftover Dixie Bell um, rice paper that I thought would be fun to put in them. And then I might even take some gold gilding wax and just go around the edges of the shells. And then I have some of this. I have this blue paper. And then of course I have the this blue paper so I think that that's the route I want to go because again I'm just building off my blue and white display that I'm wanting to do and then the last thing I have is this tray and I also because it is the mushroom thing I think that this little paper right here would look really cute in the tray and then I possibly might be able to keep this wood tone um, because I feel like it goes really good in that neutral way. So first thing we're gonna do before we start anything is get some paint on these products. It wasn't Smurfs, guys. It was David the Gnome. Oh, you do look it up? Yeah, I had to look it up because I really like that show a lot. Yeah. Okay, so for all of this, I just washed them really good. And I'm just gonna throw some drop cloth on them so that way I can make sure, you know, because they're she, she seashells is what I'm trying to say. She sells seashells down by yeah. the seashore. Um, it does have some discoloration, you know, so I'm just going to make sure that 
You brighten that bad boy up. Brighten it up so that way when I... Give it a consistent I, color. Yeah, when I put my papers on there, none of that will show up. That makes sense. Drop cloth for the win, Drop Darren said. Drop cloth always for the win. Oh, that reminds me. I need to check on something. So I'm just going to give it a coat. I probably can get by with just doing one coat. We'll have to see on these um, ones that have a little bit more brown to it. We'll just see. I was trying to see if Dixie Bell shipped our order, mm -hmm. but they have not. They have not. We'll ship your order in three to five days. Well, they say it's uh, <laughs> been longer than three to five days. Shell bowl is a cool idea. I have a cigar box that I use as a pocket dump when I get home from work. Box yeah. of claw foot legs and a fancy clasp. I've seen these um, done, and I've just never. I don't know. I mean, we we don't exactly. I should get a pocket dump. I just throw my stuff on the on edge the of the counter, counter and then. It yeah. gets misplaced after that. I don't, um, we don't really have like a, I would say a beach um, a market for where we live at. No. But I, I mean, we do get a lot of travelers and stuff like that, but I don't think that you have to live at the beach too. Jay said his cigar box is leather lined. Ooh, that's nice. That is nice. I don't think you have to live at the beach to have a little bit. Judy said, love the napkins you've been using lately. Yeah, I'm excited about all these that I got. And there's a few more. So um, as soon as I can get them all situated, I'll see what I can do um, if anybody's wanting to get a bundle of those napkins because they're a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I would like to find another bookshelf to put these blue and white napkins on. I would love to do that. Love it. Yeah, we actually went looking for a bookshelf mm -hmm. uh, two days in a row one. and couldn't find any. It's okay. It'll Kat come. said the beach themed bathroom used to be popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a beach themed mirror that we had in the store for like three years. And finally, I, I accidentally uh, knocked it off the wall, and the shells broke. That thing was heavy, too. So we had to, uh, you know, salvage the mirror, but get rid of the shells. And once the mirror was salvaged, well, that covered it up. sold quick. Yeah, that covered up really nice. Covered up all that brown. So that'll work out really nice. And keep some of the brown just to yeah, keep Yeah, I keep a little look. bit, yeah, just a little bit. So I'm going to set these to the side. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this project painted, which I wish I wouldn't have put my brush in the water. But Yeah, David the Gnome. That was a good show. He used to run around saving animals and stuff. So that. And then we're just going to, I'm going to really, I really like this um, mushroom paper with the natural wood. So I'm really going to attempt to... Mushroom paper. Yeah, that other one that I have. The napkin. Uh, I'm going to really attempt to make a straight line. That's what it looks like. You're taking your time this time. Yeah. Just trying to make sure. Margie said, I have a border with seashells in my bathroom. Yeah. Your mom did too for a while. I don't have, I have sh um, shells that the kids have collected throughout the beach, but they're kind of just um, in a jar. The kind that kids collect. Mm-hmm. Well, I had, they have some good ones in there. And then for a minute, the kids would always come home with hermit crabs. <laughs> yeah. So I have shells always for that. Always hermit crabs. Yeah. Yeah. Them things, we've, we've, um, they lived for like a year, over a year. And the craziest thing, like, okay, our last hermit crab could climb the cage. And escape. And we were really bad about leaving the lid of the cage open, like not locked shut, just 
where loose. you just lift it open instead of um, pushing it back to open it up because I thought, well, a crab can't get on that. Um, well, I was wrong because he did climb out. And he climbed out of the cage and he went from the counter down to the floor. And the whole time we had no clue. And I come home one day and I realized he was gone. And I asked the kids, I was like, where's your hermit crab at? Like, did he die? And y'all just, you know, got rid of him? And they were like, no. And I was like, well, where's the hermit crab at? And they were like, I don't know. So he's not in his cage. And I'm kind of looking around like, what do you do? Like, what do you do about it? It's a hermit crab. So maybe we went for months. Yeah, it was like three or four months, yeah. It was it was a while. We went for months. We didn't know where this hermit crab was. And then one night, um, Gavin was taking a shower, and then he got out, and he come into our bedroom, like come running into our bedroom, and he was like, I just stepped on my hermit crab. So the hermit crab was in the bathroom, in his shell, under the rug, and Gavin stepped on it, and he was fine, and we literally picked him up and then brought him back in here and put him back in his cage and gave him fresh water and food. And he lived after that for a while, too. That was the longest living hermit crab we ever had. And he lived in our house for months freely. He was a free I range. Don't I, mean, I don't know I mean, what, was how, he what he was uh -huh. eating, how he survived the fall from the counter all the way down to the floor. How he crawled through the house with three dogs, I have no clue how this hermit crab survived. Yeah. But he did. Kathy said her gram made a chicken that was covered in tiny seashells. Oh, that would be cute. That, that would, would be, be really cute. cute. Yeah. That would be cute. All right, so while all these are drying, is which it won't take long, we're going to... Oh, yeah, Jay's cigar box. He just sent me a uh, message with it. Did he? Yeah, it's got those legs on it. They're really similar to the ones I bought you to put on that little thing. Really? Yeah. His cigar box is nice, though. It's not a... This ain't no regular cigar box. This is the real deal. We're going to work on this riser, and this riser is going to be really, really free simple. Free-range hermit crabs. It was a free-range <laughs> hermit crab. So what I'm gonna do is pour some Maj Pies onto this. Margie said that's funny. Oh, it it was the weirdest thing. The weirdest thing. To have that crab free ranging. And I was like, all this time we've been walking around this house and there's literally been a hermit crab. Sneaking around. Sneaking around. And I guess my dogs didn't think nothing of it. They, nobody, you know, or how somehow or another they just missed it. And I imagine that the reason why he found his way to the bathroom was because of the water, you know, moisture. And yeah, he, I can see how he survived from that because the kids leave the floor, they'll leave the floor soaking wet. Right. And then so, you gotta I mean, go in there and dry it all up after they get out of the shower. I'm at, but for months that crab was just crawling around. <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird. Barb said, while visiting my grandparents in Germany, we would watch a children's program that aired just before bedtime. They were pudgy little gnomes called Menzel Menschen hmm. and were up to adorable forest antics. Uh, wow. Menzel Menschen. That's it. That sounds better. Menzel Menschen. I don't know. I'm not too good at that stuff. Gnome cartoons. I don't remember any known cartoons i'm just trying to make sure that i get to the edge of this riser so that way when i iron on these napkins they have a good coat of mod podge down right there so it'll melt down to it you would you would remember david the gnome if you saw it i bet you think so yeah it came out in 1987. Well, maybe you wouldn't. You'd be like three or four. Yeah, but I remember watching it at my grandmother's house. Because Grandma used to keep me all the time when my mom was at work. My brother, my, Donna said, my bathroom is anchor themed. Ooh. Kat said, my brother had a tropical frog that went missing one time. I rearranged my room and somehow he was dead behind my nightstand. Oh. 
Well, I didn't. We didn't find the crab dead. But no, yeah. He lived for a long time. The other crab that we have lived from June to January of 2022. Master Davinky. The first crab. I don't know why the kids named the crabs. They named they name them. Yeah, they well they're pets, and then who takes care of the pets? Me. Yeah. He stresses out about the pets. Me. So I'm like looking for shells to so they can get into bigger shells, making sure they got food and water in their thing. They just become a chore. That's right. But they'll bring them home. All right, so I'm going to set that to the side and let that dry. And in the process, I'm going to work on these napkins of getting them separated. Barb said that the hermit crab could have nipped at sniffing dog noses and encouraged them not to eat them. He could have. And I just, you know, I didn't know. Why does our camera keep losing focus? I do not know. Nobody in my house said anything about a crab. Jay said a hermit crabs can live 15 years. I've never had mine live that long. I don't know. Maybe it's just not enough heat. Maybe I couldn't keep them hot, warm enough. I don't know. We've had a turtle for a long time. Yeah, we do have a turtle. Well, he's lived. For a hot minute. But he's Because you a, don't really know how old he is when you get him. Yeah, and he's got a heat lamp and a, heat, a big old heater, heater inside in his thing. tank. Can you hand me a piece of parchment paper? So, um, what I do want to do is kind of go ahead and iron these napkins um, to be, sorry, to be as straight as possible. So, I'm just going to take this parchment paper and I'm going to sandwich it. There we go in between and the main reason why I'm doing that is because there's a good possibility I have Mod Podge on this counter <laughs> from previous projects. Kat said, I've seen some people that have insanely fancy setups for hermit crabs. Not us. I wouldn't say ours was incredibly fancy. It was just a little tank. It's just a, yeah. Uh, he, he had a lot of options as far as shells. Yeah, and he had a lot of shells. The things, the little uh, driftwood in there and stuff. To the little ball that they can push. Uh, do stuff with, but, I mean, they was just living their hermit crab life. <laughs> but, like I said, they probably, I, I probably should have done more research on it. But the last time my kids went on vacation, I begged them not to bring me home any kind of critters. And they didn't. And they didn't, thank goodness. I was like, please don't bring home a pet. Now, one time I almost bought Gavin a snake. I don't know how, how, I don't, how did I not end up getting it? I, you know what, I didn't even, my iron is not even all the way hot. No, you didn't give it time? No. It probably cut off on its own after you turned it on the first time. It's on now. It's green. I don't think I have a good connection. I don't think I have it plugged up I'm good. No, I do, I do. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It probably cut off. It might have been just me, yeah. I'm just going to iron it. Yeah, we didn't have any fancy setups for the hermit crabs. No. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I just wanted it to be, yeah, that's good. Got the problem ironed out. I just wanted it to be as straight as possible so I can hopefully match these up really, really good. Now, she tried this on another one, guys, and she actually did, she did really, really, really good on it as far as tiling it goes. We looked at another one that would be easier to tile, but she just uh, stuck with the blue one. Yeah. I like, because I'm working on that blue and white display. I'm really wanting to 
fill that cabinet up. I have some blue and white dishes. Yeah, she got a bunch of blue um, willow dishes from somebody. And stuff like that. So I'm just trying to go. I like the blue and white because it's easy to transition the blue and white from spring into summer. Because you can add in the red and stuff like that. So it's kind of where I'm going with it. If I can keep the blue and white on the shelves long enough. Kat said the blue and white look is so beautiful. It is. It's just so clean and crisp. Very pretty. And I really like these. That's what Brenda Berry got the other day, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. A bunch of blue and white dishes. She's got some blue and white. And I think I'm going to be able, now that I have them ironed up, I think I'm going to be able to seam it up pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it's looking like it. Yeah. It is looking like it. So we'll do that. Now, that's a twall pattern, right? Instead of a blue willow pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's got horses and dogs on it and stuff like that. So I need this to be really dry before I go and attempt to lay my napkin on it. And these are still drying. If I grab my heat gun, I could. Why isn't your heat gun already grabbed? I didn't. You're going to use it, it every every live stream. I know. Let me grab my heat gun, and that will help for sure. Because it doesn't take long. But yeah, like she said, it was, it's crazy how the hermit crab just all of a sudden appeared out of the blue. Don't bark, Cammy. Don't bark. All right. So Cammy's probably going to bark. Cammy's probably going to bark. Because the uh, heat gun, of course. But she's too short, so she won't get me. <laughs> well, she'll still try to bark. Yeah, she'll still bark. She's a crazy dog, but a good one. Yeah. All right, do you just want to, can you mute me? Yeah, I'm going to mute the whole thing. Okay. It'll dry real Here fast. Here we go. I'm going to mute you. Uh, mute. And there we go. So she barked one time. So we all didn't have to suffer through the loudness of her bark. The video Missy uh, recorded yesterday, Cammy barked in that video too, so we had to cut and then reinsert to make it line up so it wouldn't be Cammy barking so loud. Actually, all the dogs barked. I don't even know why. There was nobody outside. Because mm -hmm. the trash pickup was early on Thursday. Also, exciting news, guys. If you haven't seen our post on YouTube, but we're getting fiber optic internet at the store finally. For the same price as I've been paying for my two megabyte service. Because when I talked to the guy, he was like, oh yeah, it says here that you got 18 megs per second. I said, no, we got two megs per second. And he laughed and he said, we're well, going to have one gig up and one gig down. So that's going to be awesome. So we'll be able to share more of the actual store with you guys if that's something you're interested in. Because uh, that's the one thing we've always wanted to be able to do is live stream from the store. You know, show people's booths and maybe show how Missy sets up a booth, stuff like that. But uh, I've never been able to. If you've ever watched, if you've seen when May May's at the store, you get good, decent. You get decent video for like the first couple of aisles, and that's just yeah. decent video. And then, uh, yeah, Margie said, "I saw that. That's great." Karen said, "I think that'll be a lot of fun." Kathy said, "Yes, please go live at the store." Go live at the store. That's what we would like to. Yeah, most definitely. When he when look when the AT and T guy went to he was at the store yesterday. Emily called me on my on, on my phone and said, "Hey, uh, AT and T's here and wants to talk to you." And I was like, "Oh, I bet they do," <laughs> because the last time they came in, they asked me about our service. I got an ad running, so now I'll be able to test see how this works. And. Uh, I made some pretty vocal complaints to the service rep, but this guy, when he called me, he's like, hey, I just wanted you to let you know that fiber optic's in. 
And I was like, okay. He said, do you want it? I said, absolutely. I said, how much is it going to cost? He said, oh, same as you were paying. I was like, I'll take it. I'll so take it. Monday morning, 8 o'clock, he'll be there to install it. It'll take him from 8 to 4. Our credit card machines will probably be down for about five minutes. One thing I've, I've noticed. Jay, the answer is yes, we do on that one. But it's like... One thousandth of one cent. What? Ads. Oh. And yeah, it starts back where we currently are right now. So I was worried that it would skip, like take you back seconds. Right. The thing I'm trying to work out with the ads is when they uh, place, and YouTube recommends that you let them place them automatically, but I'm not digging the automatically. So I'm gonna change that in the ne in the next next video, probably change that to a timed, maybe like 30 minutes or an hour, or maybe I can manually do it. I don't know, I've been researching it. Hopefully I can get it squared away before the next live show. Okay, so we're Cause gonna... I got one as well. We're gonna tile this up, and it's I'm. I don't think that um, it's gonna be a big deal if there's a little bit of a space or anything like that. I'm just gonna try to tile it up as best as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna peel this one back, and I'm just gonna put this one down here, um, cause I feel like I need to kind of do it on the center more so than on the side or anything like that. Um, the thing about the napkins versus like actual rice paper in tiling is that um, I think it's because they're thinner they can move more and they're probably not cut exactly where you would prefer them to be cut um, because you know I'm sure this is just a massive roll of napkins that um, is printed out and then of course, they just cut them with the machine, so there's probably not really any thought into exactly where it's cut or whatever and to make them tolerable because I'm sure they're not making napkins for this purpose, but this is what I'm going to use it for. That's why most of them have those white uh, yeah, edges. Yeah, they have an edge. So we're just going to make the best of it. Barb said, yay, store tours. Donna said, love seeing the store. Awesome. Lorna said, I enjoy May May's walkthroughs. Yeah. We're hoping now that we have internet, that will work a lot better. Margie said, I haven't gotten any ads. That's good. Ads are, are, ads, ads are weird, apparently. Apparently, some people get them, some people won't. You can set it up to timers. I saw if I let YouTube automatically set it up as a timed thing, it'll do it like four, uh, like every 15 minutes. Uh, I'm not down with that. So I'm just making sure to iron really good around my edges and everything. So that way it's like nice and smooth. And that's why I'm looking at manual placement. Maybe being able to say, hey, I'm going to put it in right here and have a little countdown that says, hey, and then hopefully they'll be skippable because I'm big about, I'm, I'm big in the skippable stuff. This is the tricky part because like I said, I don't think Maryland that they, says store tour would be great. They cut them exactly square, square like you want them to be. Which you would think a big machine would just have a blade coming down, making sure everything stays square. So I'm just going to match it up the best that I can. Iron just a little bit at a time. Because like I said, it's just not square. So there's like that line right there. Like it's straight right here. And it would be straight right there. So there's a possibility it's just like a tiny overlap. But I really don't want it to be an overlap for the simple fact that um, I wasn't going to modge podge on the top of it 
because this is just for decor and stuff. So just work with me for a minute. Now I'm watching it all intensely. All intensely, I am too. Um, let's see if this will work. So I'm just kind of, I'm trying to focus on where this horse is because I feel like he's like the centerpiece. Yeah, a little bit. And then you just kind of mush them off. So I'm left. just kind of right. putting a little bit of heat. And then I'm going to work my way down right through this seam. Hold your tongue just right, Karen said. Yeah. A little bit of heat just to get it down. Let me see if I can zoom that in some so they can see that better. And then move this down. So zoom. Not much, but it's a, it's a little bit better. Uh -oh. Barb said, I'm holding my breath. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Trying to concentrate. I think this is the quietest we've ever been. And then just finish ironing it out. Making sure that I get my edges really good. So that way when I go to sand off this excess, it's just the edges are really good. And, and then for like the other one that I did, there was a few spots where maybe I just didn't get Mod Podge on either not thick enough or just did I somehow missed it. It's easy to do. So then I just took my flat clear coat and I went all the way around the edges, but I didn't go all through it because I didn't want to reactivate it. You know, this is all water-based products and then it's just going to make your iron napkin back up. And then it's going to make your iron napkin back it's up. It's going to make your napkin wrinkle back up. <laughs> and then, um, that's kind of not what I was going for on this one. I was trying to have like a smooth surface. So Milan's not too bad. It's like I can see it, but I think once you um, play something on it and stuff like that, I don't think it's going to be able. Donna but, said, I agree. Getting the horse matched up was the best. It looks great. Yeah, thank you. I had sandpaper right there in that little thing. Yeah. Right here. So I'm just going to use this sandpaper, and I'm going to go just in a real easy downward motion. Because this tears really easy. Clean up these edges. And she's using 220 for this. 220 grit sandpaper. And this will let me know if I need to come back through with some clear coat. Just to touch the edges up to make sure that they are all the way down. Kathy said if you use that faux rice paper, would that help cover the seam? You know what? I actually, I, if I would have thought about it and made, um, I could have made this into the faux rice paper. And then I think I could have put it on and it, the wrinkles and yep. ironed it. And so that would have had that whole wrinker, wrinkled old yep. texture, but it would have been easier to um, not focus so much on this, the seam. You know, like that wouldn't have stood, stood out because... For me, I feel like once I know where the seam is, so my eyes are always going to be drawn to it. And I ha I just feel that's the way it is. But right. if you just hold it up and show somebody, they don't know where your seam is, um, and they're not really going to spot it, I don't think, is easy. But I think especially, too, if you had this sitting on the center of your table and you had, like, say you put this in your kitchen table and you had some white dishes on a vase, you're you're not really seeing this whole plain thing, right? You're just seeing parts of it. Right. And I feel like, you know, it's okay that if it's 
not all the way perfect, but I think this napkin would be really pretty to be made into the, um, the faux rice paper, and I'm excited to do that with this one. Um, You're getting lots of hearts. Oh, hearts. Um, Judy said, looks great. I knew you could do it. Ah, oh, thank you. Lisa thank said, hey, everybody, I'm late, but I made it. Hey, Hi, Lisa. Lisa. Barb said, I used to bite my tongue with the tip sticking out between my lips when concentrating. I was splashed by acid in chemistry lab and it burned my tongue and have trained myself not to do that anymore. Wow. Holy cow, that would uh, yeah. stink. Wow. That would hurt. Yeah, it would. No, I used to stick my tongue out when I was doing something really hard. What was it? Turning wrenches? No, I know what it was. It's when I was, yeah, it was when I was working on the truck and I was doing all that stuff with the sockets. And then that socket gave way and I bit my tongue real hard along the side. Mm. You remember that? That was terrible. All right, so obviously there's two good pieces right here, so I'm going to save that. It was when that ratchet broke on me that it happened. So I think on this one, um, you can kind of see a little bit right there. So what I would do to finish this is I don't have my clear coat over here with me or would. Um, I'll just take this little paintbrush and I'll take and dip it into the clear coat and then I'll just um, easily just go around the edges just to make sure that all of that is put down and secure. And it's just going to be where my glue, I didn't get quite to the edge. And then obviously I need to finish painting the bottom of it and I might even, um, I either will paint these spools or I might stain them. I'm not 100% sure, but that's a riser and I really love this blue and white and I think it'll be really pretty set up with some white like a pitcher on it with some florals maybe a little trinket like that wouldn't that be cute it would be super cute yeah Kat said I've had to break the habit of biting my tongue or lip because of razor riding one bumper accident could be painful Ooh, yeah. that is true yeah. that is true so that's one easy project that we did with napkins and I think it looks really pretty. So you could really make anything into a riser. You could apply this to books. Yeah. How pretty would that be on books? I think altered books are cute. Mm -hmm. Or cool, not yeah. cute. Yeah. I gotta quit saying cute. So here's our seashells. But honestly, let me go ahead and get another coat of um, of drop cloth on this. Cat said the riser looks great. Tina said heart, thumbs Thank up, you. and you get one worthless gold star. Ah, nice. Isn't that what my mate calls them? Worthless gold stars? Worthless gold stars. So I'm going to go ahead and get my second Barb coat. said so pretty. I think it's really pretty. I, th I really like that um, napkin. I think it's, um, it has a lot of possibilities. I'm excited to use it on a multiple different things. Cause like I said, I think that would be really pretty on uh, to decoupage onto old books or just hardcover books that sit out. I think it would be really pretty. Lisa said, I love the napkin. Yeah, me too, me too. I love the napkin. I actually likes the napkins as well. Uh, she's got some other ones too, like that butterfly one. Did you show it off? Mm-mm. I think the butterfly one's really cool. But you got to have something kind of... The, the riser would have been perfect for that one if it was just a little bit smaller. Kathy said, I could open a mini store with the amount of antique books I have. Yeah. I'll have to try this. I think it would be... I, I really want to put it on a book. I think that would be really um, fun to put on a book. And maybe even like gold, gilded and wax. So... Uh, that back part, like a Reader's Digest book, and use that um, the back of the book, go gilded and wax that, and then have yeah. that. I think that would look really pretty. And then maybe come over it with some structure paste around the corners, and then have a uh, oval cut out of a picture, and then you have some uh, air dry clay going over the top of it like that. That would be cool. And then you could finish it with a clear, with a uh, not a clear varnish, yeah, yeah. but a yellowed uh, painter's varnish. And then add painter's crackle to that and make it crack and look like it's a broken glass over the top of it. That would be sick. That, that would be cool. All right, so we're going to use, well, I have four shells. So I'm going to try to use this napkin in a shell. 
this napkin in a shell and then this and then probably two shells. And, and this is rice just, paper. Yeah, that's just Dixie Bell um, uh, decoupage paper, yeah. So um, that way it's just a mixture of blue and white because all of my blue and white obviously is a bunch of different colors. None of it's the same. So obviously we can't... Um, yeah, this is more like a Churchill color. Yeah, yeah. And well, I have that's that. That's more like a, a blue willow color. So for but a classic Japanese. I'm going to try it. So, you know, this is going to be a little bit more um, complicated to do because it's got all of these lines and stuff like that. So we're just going to try to keep it as wrinkle free as possible. And we're just not going to stress out about any wrinkles that we do have. Barb said, I'm so excited to see this shell process. Me we too. shall see how this works out. So I think what I want to do is just pick out where I'm going. And I'm kind of see there's a boat here. So I'm kind of just going there. I know this really doesn't go with seashells. But, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? Make it make sense. Yeah. So I'm just obviously going to use a little paint water because that's what I have. Let me just get fresh water so I don't discolor my paper. Yeah, that would be a great idea. That would probably be sweet. Tina said, embrace them wrinkles. I do. Yeah, that's what we're fixing to do. We're going to Lisa them. said, you got this, Missy. I know you can do ah, it. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let me get it up. Let me get some water. I think it'll be di I think it's going to work a little bit different than you think. Now you're really concerned with it. I think it'll be a lot, a lot different than you. I think it's going to go a lot better than you think it will. I think what I want to do is just actually, because I'm just wanting to go on the outside of it, I think what I'll do is I'll just lay my shell down. You'll need to go a little bit bigger than your shell. Oh, though, yeah, yeah. Because it's sure. going to drop down into the shell by uh, about two inches. I think I'm just going to. Tina's. I just, I just got Tina's joke. <laughs> Embrace your wrinkles. I do. <laughs> I'm just gonna take my water brush and go around the edges, and then kind of tear it gently because it is a napkin. Gently tear it. Gently tear it. Firmly grasp it. If Kayla was in here, she'd get it. And then, there you go. So, for me, my brain says... Go in the middle first? Nope. What does your brain say? My brain says to start right here and then work my way and smooth it. Yeah. Starting in the middle, though. No, start right here yeah. and then work your way down. I don't know. I'm confused now. <sighs> so I'm just going to... Blue water and seashells. Sure they go together. Yeah, sure. That's what <laughs> I think too. So I just applied a little bit of Mod Podge there. That's some freshwater clams. Yeah. And then uh... I'm just going to put it down. Trying to make sure that I'm on the right side of the camera. And just be gentle because it's easy to tear. So the trick is to move slow. That's what I would say. <laughs> and then I'm going to lift this back. And I'm going to take a little bit more Mod Podge and I'm just going to go through and paint it outwards. Jay and his dad joke. That's too funny. I'm just kind of going up a little bit further and hopefully I don't regret that. If I regret it, I'll know not to do it on the next she-shell. Seashell. Seashell, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I keep on saying she-shell. She she-shell. Like she-shack. Yeah. And just keep it that's too funny. Uh, she shows. You can she shows, kind she of gently lift it. Lorna said, I love dad jokes. 
because I'm not, I'm just like tapping it down. I'm not necessarily at, like at first like pushing it down. So I'm kind of just tapping it a little bit just to see um, if it's going to line up just right. But again, just be really careful because it is a napkin and it can um, tear. Tear, And then I'm just kind of pushing it into, but we're just not going to stress about the wrinkles. Well, they're not obvious for one, so that kind of helps. It's like when Kaylee came in here the other day and said she was hungry. And I said, hi, hungry. I'm dad. That she literally, her eyes turned into daggers, and I can yeah. feel them going. I don't blame her. <laughs> Hi, hungry. I'm Hi. dead. So then I'm just going to take a little bit of Mod Podge and I'm just going to paint it on. And hopefully that'll smooth out any, any wrinkles that you have left on the process. It's not really going to. I said, hopefully. I just, hopefully it doesn't add more wrinkles. <laughs> uh, the laughing faces. And then, there we go. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure, especially right here in the center. And it might seem like I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but I'm really not. I'm just trying to be even and smooth as much as possible. Some of y'all may remember this brush. This is the brush we use for uh, any kind of class where you have to do any painting on something small. These brushes are really good. I mean, they're not nothing crazy expensive, but they are good brushes. And I've abused these. Yeah, they're student. They're art student grade, so they're made to last. They're just not the best. Yeah, they're just not the best, but I have used them and I have abused them. Tina she says she rolled her eyes out loud. <laughs> yeah. Donna yeah. said, if Missy is like me, by the time she gets to that fourth shelf, she'll have it figured out pretty good. I might. I might. So I'm going to, I want to sand this off, but um, I'm going to be a little bit patient and wait and let some of this Mod Podge dry. But I don't think that that looks bad at all, actually. So I'm really excited about it. it I mean, it does have wrinkles. But it's nowhere near um, as bad as I was afraid that it was going to be. So let's see how this one works out. Kathy said, when my kids were little, we could get in the car to go someplace, and they would want to know where we were going. I would say, down the road a piece. <laughs> they hated that. <laughs> Jay well, said, everybody, everybody remember to like that video. That's thank you, Jay. Thanks for hollering that out, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Um, Barb said, I'm so impressed that you can speak while you're doing this. I would be muted or speaking word salad fragments. That <laughs> That's what Missy used to do in the early days of the live streams. Look look how pretty that is with the, just a light. Like it's like a light distressing of the ink. Look how it went through. Can you see it really good on camera? Yeah. Yeah. How, a bit of lag there I think for that's a second, really internally. pretty. Oh, I definitely want to save this piece because I would like to do the faux rice paper and then have that as a background and just let this, like, a distressed image come through. That'd be really cool. Also, this makes me think a lot about the inks that they put in napkins while we be using them all the time. Yeah, touching your face. Touching your face and everything. I'm just kind of like, ah, what are we doing? Karen said, it looks great. Margie said, gonna be pretty. Lisa said, told you you could do it, Missy. It looks great. Thank you. Margie said, that's a beautiful napkin. I think that this one's really pretty. So I'm just going to do the same thing like I did on the other one because that worked out really good. I'm just going to use my paintbrush water, and I'm just going to over... Make sure you get... If you do this project, make sure you give yourself a lot of work and room. Um, Karen said, very pretty. It's better to just... Trim some off than to not have enough because it does go deep into the shell. Barb said, exhaled. Gorgeous. Oh, it looks you. like porcelain. Karen said, Barb, yes. Wow. Yeah. It does. I mean, you did a great job. Okay, let's save that. I'll take this. 
look this up. And so, I, well, I went that way, but I wonder if I should have went this way. Like that. I just thought about that. that well, look, matter, I kind of did it. I gave myself enough room for each side. Yeah. So, yeah, that works out. So, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to actually just go ahead and mod podge the center of this, but I will go out a little bit deeper to make sure that I get this little spot little like, right here. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I get that really good. Then I'm going to... That's not near as wrinkled as you was making it out to be. I was thinking that it was going to be really wrinkly. It smoothed out a lot when you went over it with that last coat. So, like how I did on that last one, I just kind of patted it until I got it where I wanted it to go. And then I'm going to lift it up. And then go. You could... um. To make your napkin, a l I know for rice paper, um, you can spray your rice paper with water to give it a little bit more workable, as which I, I'll get my mister when I go to do that one and kind of show you. But I don't know so much about a napkin because it's a napkin and napkins are made to absorb water. So it's almost like it would make it easier to tear. But I know on rice paper, it helps it be a little bit more work workable if you need it to be. Yeah, as far as getting wrinkles out mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Imagine finding a 12-line seashell on a beach, Barb said. Oh, wouldn't that be so cool? Well, now you can. All you got to do is just go make you a seashell. I'm going to say seashell every single time. Make you a seashell. And then uh, place it out on the beach and be like, oh my gosh, look at this shell. <laughs> it must be from Rustic Relics. <laughs> a little bit more mod podge there. Donna said, yes, Missy, I was thinking the same thing about the direction of the design. I guess because I'm a seamstress and a scrapbooker. Oh, uh, yeah. The other thing, I, I'm glad I caught it. I'm, I'm glad I... <laughs> Realized that before. It'd be like that time we did, did that box and did, oh, I, did, the, really bad did everything that. upside down. I did everything upside down. It's all right. Let me pour some of this. I'm glad. I rec I'm glad I've seen it. Making sure everything is good. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Just kind yeah, of that was kind of... software lag just then. I don't know what that was. It wasn't the stream itself. It was actually the camera. The overhead camera lagged. Donna said, me too. It was making me nervous. <laughs> you was making everybody I nervous was. when you just threw it up there like that. When I was gonna go the wrong way. That's all right. Don't worry, guys. Sometimes I catch it before I do it. Sometimes. It wouldn't be the first time that I do something backwards or the wrong way. Oh, but I think that's going to look really pretty, too. This napkin is a little bit different than that napkin. I feel like maybe that one has a is a little bit of better quality as far as like the paper goes. Um, but it still serves its purpose as far as like, I might be able to just actually tear this. Cause it's a she shell and it's very um, sea shell. Oh, goodness. It actually just it comes what? off pretty easy. What did you say it was? It's a seashell. <laughs> I wish Kayla was in here. I know. I'm glad she's She'd not. be squaring you she away would, real quick. She would get me in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the thing is like, how am I going to get this part off because I really can't stand that but look how it just tore so easily yeah just wet a little bit and tear it yeah maybe so so I'm just gonna put this to the side 
so we have this one and we have this paper. Okay, so this is actually well, that one's wrinkle paper. free. That last one. This one? Yeah. Oh no, it's not wrinkle free. It looks like it's wrinkle free to me when I'm sitting here. That's just at that. It. That's the angle. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yikers. Don't you yikers! That I don't know one. if I can do this. Huh? Yeah. I'm have to throw these away when they're done. You better hush. All these wrinkles. Yeah. You gotta embrace the wrinkles. Remember, that's what Tina said. <laughs> I know that's what Tina said. What Tina <laughs> but said I don't know does. if I can be embracing those wrinkles. Oh goodness. Have you seen my continuous mixer? Your what? My um water bottle. Uh no, I haven't. Uh, last time I saw it was when you were painting that white shelf. I used it yesterday. Yeah, when you were painting that shelf. That's the last time I saw it. Oh, it's right here. Somebody threw some hearts. Hearts? Yep. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Hearts are cool. Out of water. That's probably Emily or Cat throwing the hearts. Let's see. Okay, so this is going to be different because this is actual rice paper. So let's see how much easier it is to work with the rice paper versus the napkin. So you should be able to work the wrinkles out of this one a little bit better then, right? Possibly, I really don't know. So I'm just gonna do the same thing and water it. I wish it would show me when these were gonna happen. That's what I would like. I I guess we'll just go with manual placement in the future. Kathy says she had five ads in a row. Dang. So let's see. We'll tear it with the water. Lorna said there's a whole lot of embracing going on. There's a lot of embracing. Barb. It said, not wrinkled, strategically crackled. Oh, <coughs> I like that. Well, see, that's the thing, too. It kind of, the wrinkles on this looks kind of like rice paper almost. And I bet when it dries up, it will look like rice paper. Come on, rice paper. Tear it for me. Yeah, Lisa doesn't get asthma because she's a YouTube premium member. Ah, uh, smart. All right. Oh, that is that smart. Our YouTube TV. Yeah. I forgot what they call it. All right. So I love Which, you know, they're these probably flowers. cheaper than Hulu, honestly. We might need to look into YouTube TV, actually. Because even the Hulu Disney bundle, you don't get everything that you would like for. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my continuous mister and I'm just going to lightly spray the back of that paper. Then I'm going to take this glue and I'm just going to get where I'm going to put it at. And then we're going to take this paper. And because we softened it up with the water. Karen joined us. Karen Romando heard of us from May May. She's finally getting to watch us live. Ah, hi. So because we sprayed it with water, we've softened the paper up. And we're oh, able Lisa said to... her YouTube TV is 80 bucks a month. So maybe not such a good idea. Yeah, when you... No, look, when you consider how much Hulu and all that stuff is. Hulu Live is like sixty nine ninety nine. More than that, is it? Yeah. And then you, but we have the Disney bundle, but you can't really change the bundle, or you couldn't. The last time I tried to change everything, we ended up having to have two subscriptions, which was ridiculous, just to watch college football, just so Gavin could watch college football, because yeah. college football stresses me out, so I had to quit watching it. So we're just gonna. Tap it down the same way. Kathy, yeah. that is not our rice paper. That is going to be Dixie this Bell's is rice Dixie paper. Dixie Bell's rice paper. Ours is a little bit more texture. Right. While theirs is a little bit smoother. I have a feeling that theirs is manufactured. Our order is ours natural and it's on a roll. And then we cut it down to size. It's a it's a big process. 
So I'm gonna just see if I can get, cause it's almost like an air bubble right here. I don't, Karen. I would probably be even more stressed out after watching that. She asked if I watched college basketball. Nope. No. I get stressed out too easy watching sports because I get invested. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So the um, the rice, DC Bell's rice paper is a lot more, um, okay, you can still tear it easily and make rips and you still can get wrinkles with it, but it's a lot more uh, durable is what I'm, I guess uh, the word I'm going to say. Um, than the napkins. Than the napkins. So you can, you know apply a little bit of pressure and if I had some saran wrap I probably could use it to um, mash these down just a little bit without tearing my paper to try to get the wrinkles out. Margie said that's so pretty. This one is pretty. Yeah, I, th I think that. So this one is just more durable as far as it goes. Um, but I'm also trying to remember that I um, actually have creases and stuff in the shell. So, you know, there is that. It, there's natural, because these are real shells, these, there's just natural lines and stuff in that. So that is something to keep in mind when you're doing this. But mainly I'm just wanting to make sure that I have it in all of the creases. And then I can work out any wrinkles if that are possible. Karen, uh, Karen Mondo said, watching you from Lake of Ozarks, Lynn Creek, Missouri. Ooh. Also, upcycle, love arts and crafts, photography, gardening, cats and dogs, and of course, arts and crafts. Nice. Lisa Green said, there was some crafter I watched for the first time the other day that used Dixie Petal paint. I've got to try it. You know, Lisa, we that's we're an elite Dixie Bell retailer. Mm -hmm. It's the only products we use, and we used to use a bunch of different other ones, and we've since streamed down. It was a, a friend of ours recommended us give them a try, so we drove down to Montgomery or to Prattville to a shop, bought some, brought it back, tried it, said yes, love it. I'm gonna see if I can sell it. So that's exactly what we did. And we've been using it ever since. It's it's one of the smoothest and consistent chalk paints that we've ever used. Um, I think it is the smoothest, actually. I could go with another blue and white napkin, but I would just be repeating. Karen, um, Karen Mondo said, I love the old look. Kat said, the only time I watch sports is for tailgate parties, and even then it's just for the food. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so I do have these napkins. They are butterflies, and they're not blue and white, but it's not like I have to put it in the blue and white section. Barb said, so so soft and delicate. Those are very, yeah. And so. And then Karen's letting Lisa know how addictive Dixie Bell stuff yeah, is. Yeah, it can be very addictive. So do I want to use the butterflies, or do I want to use another napkin? Like Karen right now is actually waiting on me to receive a shipping so then I can box her stuff up and ship it out to her. I think I'm going to use a butterfly. Cat said love the butterfly. Yeah, okay, cat. I'm going to do the butterfly. I will say some of these napkins can be a little complicated to separate. Just a little bit. Those yeah. The mushroom one is very hard to separate. Now these napkins, this these napkins right here were what, like seventy cents each. I cannot remember. Some ridiculous amount of money that, for a napkin. You you do that math, not me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I like this one. This one would be fun, or the girls would like this one. Lisa said, "I'm going to try it." Cat said, "Oh, not cat." Margie said, "So pretty." Karen said, there is blue in that butterfly. There is blue in this butterfly. So you're sticking to your blue theme, I guess. I thought you had one more sheet of blue and white. No, because I, I was going to print it on our rice paper, but I didn't get a chance to. Right. I think That's this would be really pretty. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I've been doing. 
these kind of have like a postcard look how they're like that so i'm just gonna kind of go in the middle here everybody's doing blood butterflies and hearts ah uh, lisa said i love butterflies butterflies for the win i think it'll be pretty in this she sh seashell i've probably said it that way my whole entire life that's why i can't correct myself <laughs> seashell and library yeah <laughs> Yeah. You want to see Kaylee get mad? Let, let Missy say library. I'm not going to say it now, but <laughs> I will not say it right. You'll probably say it right in front of everybody else. Yeah, the one time I say it right. Yeah, that'll look really pretty. So, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to do an experiment on this one because if it, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. We'll be able to take it off. We're just going to lightly, lightly miss this napkin, like how I do with the rice paper. And then we're just going to see if that helps. And if y'all didn't notice, she sprayed that napkin from about... I sprayed it further away. From like two feet away. Yeah. With the Mr. Bottle. I sprayed it like on the this paper is so much thicker it can handle it more so than a napkin can but i just kind of want to see if it helps try a scallop shell to, tina said um a scallop shell oh it's to call it a scallop shell <laughs> yeah that might help me um i just want to see if it'll help with the that will help you actually wrinkles i think because i know with like that kind of rice paper it helps it be softer and more workable but i'm scared with the napkin that it would make it be just a tad bit more delicate which it probably will so i'm just gonna lightly tap it down and hope that i don't tear it And if it wrinkles, it wrinkles. I'm not going to be mad at it. And if it don't, that'll be even better. Yeah. And then we're just going to push it down. I keep thinking, where are all the he shell when she says she shell? <laughs> <laughs> These are all girl shells. They're girls. I know that. <laughs> Barb Savage. She's she was savage with that one. Yeah. Where all the he she shells, he shells with all the she shells. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. That's you funny. got raked over the coals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kaylee. That's something Kaylee would say. Yeah. Kaylee is our local grammar police in this house. She is. Barb said it. Or you could say clamshell. Clamshell. That'll work for me. I, this napkin is really nice as far as like the quality of the I, napkin. I should hope so. I like it a lot as far as it goes on decoupage in it. And then I wonder if I can sugar's on that iron blender if I can take a piece of this plastic and let's see. you figure a smoother plastic like oh, ziplock yeah. bag would be even better a saran wrap would be key but Okay, I'm just not going to fool with it because I don't want to risk tearing it, but it seems like it'll be okay. Kathy said that's why they cost 70 cents a piece. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I didn't realize how how expensive napkins could actually get. But I guess it makes sense. It's a That one was a three-ply. Uh, no, it's just this right here, but I guarantee you it's just the ink. But look how the back of the napkin didn't have hardly any of the ink bleed through. Look, I think that's going to be pretty. 
I wonder. Yeah, I so bet this is the first one that I did. Let's see if I can. I bet it's not even ink. I bet it's toner. I'm just hoping I could. They're probably using a hundred thousand dollar machine to make that stuff. You think so? Yeah. I was hoping I could. Karen said, "Could you use a disposable glove?" I th our nitrile gloves will. will uh, it would stick, wouldn't it? Because they 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 have a, a non-slip surface, so they would probably be bad. Vinyl gloves would probably work. The uh, this like food service gloves. Yeah. Because they're made not to stick to anything. It's a little bit harder to sand. I wonder. Yeah, just spray it with some water. Let's see. Do it this way. Yeah. Do it this way. Yeah, that's much easier. Much easier just to go around yeah, the Yeah, Karen edges. said yes, food service glove. I, yeah, I bet a yeah. food service glove would be perfect. Mm -hmm. I used to use... I, the only time I ever wore when I worked in the restaurant world was uh, making meatloaf. And everything then, else, it didn't bother me. I just wash my hands. But meatloaf, for some reason, once you put that uh, stuff in there, it stains your hands. Once these are all the way dry, what I would like to do is take some gold gilding wax on um, my paintbrush and just touch the edges of all the shells. That's what I would like to do. Yeah, these, Barb, these were called trifold napkins. But yeah, it, it is very similar to a bathroom towel lip. The butterfly one? Yeah. Yeah, that one was a trifold. These are just the regular, regular ones. Yeah, table napkins. Yeah. Yeah, the trifold is much, it's much nicer. They were recommended for weddings and events and stuff. Fancy. Okay, so... That would be gorgeous with that gold gilding wax, Karen said. Yeah, I think um, just touching the rims of it just to finish, like, to close up the image and everything, tie everything in together, just do a little bit of that gold gilding wax and just go all the way around the edges. I think that would be really pretty. Um, and then it would just be... A finger a cot would finish. be very helpful. A what? The finger cot. Uh, the glove that goes over your finger, basically. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring it all down. I gotcha. Good thing about a napkin is it is easy to... Wet and tear. Wet and tear. Really easy. Well, I think it's looking good so far. I think that's really pretty. You're too high up. You gotta come back towards yourself. So there you go. And I think that when I can get yeah, the, that looks that looks really really good, Missy. Yeah, I think when I can get the gilding wax to go around the edges, it would just be really make pretty. it popping. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, Karen. She's gonna run with that one. If you um, if you used a, a gloss um, finish, it would have that look, you know, just kind of shiny. Right. If you did the gloss Mod Podge or something, that would be interesting to see how that looked. So I'm gonna do these the same way. Very line. pretty, Margie said. Barb Thank said, "Oh, gold." I think I think the gold is gonna look really good. I forgot where that's a gold at actually. I think it's gonna make everything pop, but you just want to make sure that everything is all the way dry before you go through and do that. Where did I put the gold gilding wax? Um, I put it up yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah. I thought I had it sitting right here by the computer. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to use it today because. You have to wait for this to dry. Margie said, I agree that the gold will look good. I think the gold will look really good. Just using my fingernail to kind of peel it along. back. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you're doing that. This one tore really easy as far as. Um, 
coming off the edges, I might have went heavier on the Mod Podge around more of the edges more than I did on the first one. Um, just to make sure. But I think I think just making that gold and going around the edges is really gonna Cameron Mondo so very pretty. I gotta go. I will be finished watching later. Bye, have a good day. Okay. And then this one. Donna said, please be sure to show them after you do the gold. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will. Now, this one is going to be a little bit harder because this one is thicker. But I should be able to do the same thing. We could dry them with the heat gun and then do the gold. Um, I just don't want it to bubble Maybe up. Maybe crack the shit. Oh, I, yeah. I, I think, didn't think that, about that I think on this one is one of those things that you need to be patient on and just let it naturally dry so that way you don't bubble up your paper with the heat and the watch podge um it just needs to dry and then you'll be able to come through and put um, i'll tell you what not to use a heat gun on crackle right don't heat gun crackle yeah this one for sure is a lot harder to it's not harder to tear. I mean, it is harder to tear than the napkins. It just takes a little bit more water to... Because crackle is that going to blister if you heat gun it. Like an actual, It looks like an actual blister. And that whole area stayed soft. Right. That was a quick and easy video, though. It would have took, took longer if I would have... Let me move this camera. Um, Here, I can go back up. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to get, get it closer to you because, I mean, closer this way because it's not centered. There you go. All right. That way they can see everything. Yeah, that looks. Uh, it's I looking like good this so one. far. Yeah. This one is just a lot more. Yeah, I'm zoomed in as far as I can. Yeah, you're not talking, so it must be very complicated. <laughs> trying to make sure that I don't see I lifted it. Such if I let this dry a little bit more, I might have to oh, get my finger stuck in it. I might have to let this one dry just a little bit more before I can clean up those edges. But you get it. You get the. We get the gist of you it. You get the gist of it. This because this uh, paper is thicker. So. Barb's got a question. Go ahead. I've always wondered. I'm boxed into the rule of gold on red tones and silver on blue tones. Do I have permission to break that rule? <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah, gold yeah. looks great with blue stuff. Uh, I think it does. We so use, I like an antique gold. That's which is why she uses the gilded um, wax. The gilded so wax much. is that antique gold. It, it's not that. Um, it's not that new shiny gold. It's just um, an antique, you know, gold like brass and that kind of stuff. Um, man, I think if you leave it to me, I'll put gold gilded wax on almost anything, and I think it goes with so many other colors. Sil um, Silver is the least used gilding wax we use. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of silver when I it like comes to that. Yeah. And bronze. So, you know, for some projects, I think sometimes more is less. So, like a light dusting of gold, um, more so than heavy. But in some things, I think oh, the heavier the gold, the better. I think gold looks good with greens and... Um, it most definitely looks good with red. Looks good, yeah. Definitely looks good with red. It looks good with blacks. It the soft pinks and stuff like that. I think which it looks silver good. goes really well with black as well. Um, I think it looks good with the blue. Lisa said, "I gotta go, y'all, but I'll be watching the rest of the show and can't wait to see the gold." All Thanks, right, Lisa. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, so there's that one. So that is all the shells. They just need to dry all the way, and then I'll add some gold gilding wax to them.
I think the gold is going to look really good. What do you think? Yeah, I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. I think it looks really good. Pretty. I like the butterfly one. I really do like that one. I probably won't put it in this display, but... You can put those three and you can put yeah. the other one in the other, I probably other display. probably use that one in a, another display. So last project of the day was this just this little tray. Karen, so they turned out so great. I think so. Barb says too. silver's always seemed a little cold. Yeah. And then here's just a piece of that napkin that I have um, left over. And I really like it. It has the mushrooms and snails and um, greens in it and stuff like that. So that's why I really wanted to leave this natural if I could because I feel like it just ties it all in together. It's got snips and snails and puppy dog tails. Yeah. So what I kind of want to do for this one is make me a crease so I can have this one really set to size. I love this one. It has all the greens in it. That's what I like about it. Yeah, that's always a plus. That's always a plus for Missy. She loves the green. So, duh. <laughs> I think I'm going to iron this one on. Yeah, you probably could. Yeah, you can get in the corner I think my iron, iron would be in here pretty easy. So, if that's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pour a little bit of Mod Podge in here. And then we'll just... Get a nice coat. I'm just going to pay special attention to my edges. And just make sure that That's way. That's a lot of Mod Podge. Yeah, it'll be a minute before it dries. But I just wanted to make sure that it was glued all the way down. Yeah. No, I was just trying to check out the wrinkles. Yeah. So here's one of the shells, guys. I think it turned out really good. If you'll um, mute this, I'll get this one. All right, I'm going to mute the camera for a second. But I'm going to still show you all these shells. Keep on Tell me when you're ready and I'll mute that camera. Keep on grabbing the wrong cord. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. Muting. Well, she didn't mark this time. So that's always good. Kathy said, they're all very pretty. Jay said, Boat one's my favorite. Margie said they turned out very pretty. And here's the butterfly. I'm trying to hold it in a way that y'all can see how the wrinkles aren't really that bad. They actually add a lot of character. Is yeah. that a ladybug on the snail? Um, it's the little tiny mushrooms. Oh, it's tiny mushrooms. It's the little tiny mushrooms. Jennifer said, that shell is really pretty. Kat said, wow, that butterfly, butterfly one looks so cool. It is pretty. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Jay said the boat one's his favorite. The boat? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Let me grab my scissors. And I'm going to try to cut this directly on now, the, the line. Yeah, the wrinkles in this one are negligible. Honestly. Kat, uh, Kathy said, I like the wrinkles. I think it's fun. I think it, yeah, it has a little bit of character. And when you did that right, that handmade rice paper, it's got you made sure it had wrinkles in it automatically. Right. So right here, you took and traced along the edge with your finger. Yeah. And then, um, so that way I could have a line of where I needed to carefully cut it up. I don't know who that was calling. So I can 
make it fit as best as possible. Okay, so I just got a non-skippable ad. Five seconds. It looks like I need to. All right, that wasn't bad. Trim this one up. Ah, I'm not cutting it straight. No, if you want to cut it straight, you got to bust out that, that paper cutter. Ugh, I know. What if you uh would have just used water at the edge and then pulled it after you got it, after you let it stay glued down for a minute? Would that have worked better, maybe? Maybe I probably I mean I could have easily took a razor blade and just cut it or whatever. Um, because if I ended up not cutting this right, then I'll just you know cut another one. To make it well, it looks like it's a perfect fit. It looks like a perfect fit from here. Yeah, see, Jay has the same idea lay it in there and then cut it with an exacto knife. Mm -hmm. Problem is, napkins tear so easy, they tear even with so an exacto knife. Anything. We need a rotary cutter. We went to Walmart the other day, I said we should buy one. I totally forgot about it. All right, so I'm just gonna use. This parchment paper. I'm going to do my most favorite way and iron it on. Now, why is that your most favorite way? Because it's just so simple and it's just so, like, um, it's just clean. It gives you better, smoother results. Mm -hmm. Especially for stuff like this that I want it to be smooth. Because like I said, it's okay to have like, a, I need to be so loud with this paper. <laughs> you can't help it. Can't help it. Let me get this. You should have cut it the size too. Right there. Let me see. Well, what was I thinking there? That was a good question. What was I thinking there? So I want to make sure that I get my edges in. Um, and then again with this thing right here, if I, um, just like with the riser, I can easily take some flat clear coat and just touch down on the edges just to make sure that it is um, all the way glued down because that's going to be your main thing is these corners right here so that's why i love this little cricket thing is because it's tiny enough it can't fit but you still want to make sure that they're secure all the way down so they're not coming and peeling up um so it never hurts just to take a just a tiny uh paintbrush and a little bit of flat clear coat to just make sure that your edges or sealed down. Kathy said it wor worked really well when you used the iron when you used the iron and the water on the shelf the other day to trim the trim the paper. Oh up. yeah, yeah, that did work really well. Karen said that's cute. Yeah, I think it's so cute too. I think it's just, and I really like that I get to keep the wood. I think the wood it just it just changes the wood tray into something else. I think it's really cute. It just needs to be... Um, now it needs to be trimmed up. Yeah. It just needs to be wiped down that on that paint? outside. That's There's, paint. Is, yeah. Um, I thought it was paper. Where's your, That's paint. Um, black, that black razor blade thing right there? Can't go without your cobalt. <laughs> uh. Where's my candy cough? My coffee candy. I don't need no candy. So I can be like, candy. oh look, that's just a pickup I needed. That's just a pickup you needed. <laughs> yeah. So Margie said that the wood looks really good. I think the wood looks really good with this paper. Yeah, I'm able to just peel that up. It's got them old nails in it mm -hmm. with the round heads. Yeah, that's just gonna be pain. Is which some of it? Yeah, I can get that off there. You could probably soften the paint up with water mm -hmm. and then peel it off with a scraper. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what I'll do. But you know, obviously it's not that not that big of a deal. 
So the most important thing is, is to get the edges and the corners ironed down really good. Right. And then work your way outwards, or inwards, I mean. Right? Yeah, you're just wanting to make sure that it's all that way it doesn't, like, peel up. So there you go. That's a little tray. All right. Now, let's see. All the things that we did on this very easy Friday. We have this riser that we put napkins on. We have a little tray. And then we have some shells. How cute. They're starting to dry up some. Yeah, they are. Ta-da! All right, you want to show everything to the front of the camera now? Boom. So there's my little tray. Let me zoom in. You don't have to zoom in crazy. There you go. Well, you need to be able to see it good. And then we have seashells, seashells, clamshells, shells. Shells galore. <laughs> Key shells. Yeah, those are really good. Yeah. And then your riser. You did a good job seam matching on that riser, Missy. Thanks, Belle. Yeah, you did. So it's cute, cute, cute. Cute stuff. Barb said, oh, that cup of coffee candy's back. <laughs> laughing. Yeah. Yep. Margie said, great job today, Missy. Great show. <gasps> Donna said, looks great. Tina said, bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer said, I missed the riser. I really like it. The riser was a good 45 minutes of the video because it took so long to get <laughs> everything matched up. Trying to get the theme on the front of it. Karen Nintendo said, I show. love that riser. Kathy mm -hmm. said, great project. Yeah. So the riser is just a board. It's just a shelving with some, board. Uh, with wooden um, uh, spools. Yep. And so it's, like we thread have, spools. We have these in the store. Yep. I don't know if they're online. No, I don't think so. I don't know, but like... we have them in the store. We sell them in just little four packs or whatever. Um, but I just use them. I just use wood glue and stuff like that. and Because it's them. easy to glue them on there. They're, they are. Um, I just use them for anything. Anything that I can raise up, I like to use these. And they're, they're easy to stain and they're also easy to paint so they just hold up really good i have these this size and then i have little miniature ones that i make little miniature risers on whenever i have like just a big enough piece of scrap wood that i can turn into just a little riser and then we'll um, turn anything into a lazy susan as yeah. well and then these projects so all the, this the butterfly <coughs> and the mushrooms will all go um, the butterfly shell and then the, the mushrooms in this tray will all go good together. And that's probably how I'll set all that up. Probably. Do a whole like natural type thing. I think that's cute. Karen said, I have some old spools from my mom. I have some spools that still have the thread on them, but I, I kind of hoard them. Like I don't, I don't use them. I just have them in a bag and I'm like, I'm going to use them for a craft one day and then I don't. But those would be so pretty as like little legs. A yeah. little feet on risers, but I'm just so like that tray is adorgeous, Barb said. Oh, thank you. Marilyn said, fabulous project. Thank you, thank you. I just scared She's that. She's drinking Red Bull, by the way. Yeah. Once I run out of those little um threaded spools, I'm like, will I ever get them again? Will I ever find more? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. So I some stuff I I'm scared to craft with because I'm like, I'll never get it. Karen said, have a blessed Easter weekend. Y'all too. Y'all do. Y'all too. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So that's it for today, right? That is all that I have. And as always, we appreciate y'all hopping on and hanging out with us and watching. Um, your support means a lot to us. Thank y'all so much, guys. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Have a happy Easter. Yep. Happy and, Easter. And uh, we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Tuesday. We'll be back. Bye, y'all. Bye.